The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 16th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can make we can, we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger Stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 206 with the S&P down 11. The NASDAQ 100 is up 59. And the Russell's up 22. And the Russell, I'm sorry, the semis are up 22. And the Russell is off 17. That is a mixed bag out there. Gold's off $19. Silver's down 10 cents. Let's recruit off 40 pennies. Natural gas is up 6 cents. And a 30-year Treasury printed out 128.27. That's down nearly one full point. Now, lead the charge dollar-wise the upside. You've got service now up nearly 10 bucks or 2%. Lamb Research, 10 bucks or nearly 2%. Transdigium, 7 bucks, about 1%. Super Micro, 6 bucks, nearly 5%. Universal Display, 4%. That's about a $6 move. To the downside, it is Op Oh My Home Limited. Oh my goodness, down 60%. 18 bucks. Restoration Hardware off 18 or 7%. Horizon Therapeutics, 17 bucks, 15%. Decker Outdoor, 3%. 15 buckaroonies and Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals off 14. That's a 7% move to the downside. Let's begin uh, first with, uh, hey, what are the markets doing right now? Right here and right now. So to do that, we're going to switch over and take a look at the 30 minute time frames. They may be ruling the day. So we'll switch over to those white panel charts. Give us a moment. We'll get those populated. And what's important about the white panel charts that will set you up for the rest of the day is the TD9 count bottom. So we're always looking if we can get uniformity, we can get a set of time frame charts, in this case here, the equity future charts, to all line up with each other. And it just improves our odds. doesn't guarantee diddly, but it does improve the odds. So we did get TD9 count bottoms that uh, took place. That was at 1030. So just before we were coming on the air here. Now, here's the issue with the ES Mini. When you get a bottoming pattern, price is going to get up and test that oscillator and change. I don't really care what color it is. In this case here, it's red. Not exactly ideal. Well, it's gotten up and it's tested that. It's rejected that. And it's still printing below the bottom of its current profile, which is at the 4136 level. As long as price remains below that, well, then we could see a retest of this uh, TD9 count bottom. If price were to close below 41.27, even Steven, in, on a 30-minute basis for the ES Mini, that would be telling you that price wants to move lower. And lower would be back to the Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern from yesterday. Oh, no, that's, I'm sorry, that was on May 12th out there, and that would be in the range of about 41.11. We have a TD9 count pattern that formed out here inside the NQ. That occurred at 9.30 this morning. That then took the NQ higher. The NQ negated a, uh, a, a TD9 count breakdown level. That should have contained price it didn't. That's a bullish signal. But what I do see on this 30 minute time frame chart, it, it is currently in wave number seven. So there is a potential for a top here, short term top inside of the NQ. If we take a look at the Dow, uh, 
Roger wanted some intraday and end of week data for the Dow. Can't give you the end of week data, not because I can't, because I can't. Uh, but here what we have intraday is we can see the TD Nikel bottom. So what you're looking for here, you're watching that low. And that low so far, the low of the day, 33,129. If you see a 30 minute close below that, Roger, price is headed lower out there. Otherwise, what should occur is we should see a bounce up into that oscillator and change line. Currently printed around 33,251. The Russell 2000, also a TD nine count bottom, should take price up to 17,54. Other than getting up to those oscillator and change lines, it's uncertain as to what might unfold next. And I say that because the NQ is the one that's driving the market. So at this stage here, if we get a confirmed wave number seven top, we have still 19 minutes before we can confirm that. And in order for that to happen, you have to have a lower high. So that means we cannot see price spike even to this level, this level being 13,529.75. If we do that, wave number seven extends and we have to wait another half an hour for a confirmation on that. But the 30 minute time frame chart for the NQ is mega bullish, although it's got that seventh wave top. Why is it mega bullish? Because it's above its green house and a change line. It's above a TD nine count breakdown level and it's above the top of its profile. Now that's what's going on in a 30 minute time frame. Just to finish off the uh, Dow equity future contract to see if there's anything else out there here. Um, as we take a look at it, well, what there is on the daily time frame, it's going to be easier for me to just switch panels here, switch screens. So give me a moment. We'll go back and take a look at the daily time frame. That's important for everybody to take a look at. So here we can see in the case of the ES Mini, not just trading with inside a consolidation, with inside daily profiles, but it's also got a descending trend line out there that's acting as resistance. In the case of the uh, NQ, you can see you've got that 13,494.25 level. If you close above that, you don't have a topping signal. You do have bar number eight. You still need bar number nine to complete. If you get a successful bar number eight, 90% of the time you get to bar number nine. It says there could be a top end that forms between today and Friday. Short of that, price wants to go target 14000 and three, that's the one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. In the case of the Dow, Roger, this is what's important for you is price is testing the bottom of its consolidation pattern. Now, I could probably move that consolidation just a tad lower. I won't. We'll just leave it right here. But right now, price is testing a key level of support. That if it does break below or close below, odds favor a retest of the swing point from back on March the 15th. Now, it could be a test of the high of that swing point at 32,443. But what we could have is a consolidation breakdown. And that would give us a measured move, and that would most certainly take us down there. In the case of the Russell 2000, even though price is traded below the bottom of its profile, it's really just a sideways range. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frames as we go back. And so you're at support. So, Roger, you're at support on a daily time frame. And while you're at support on a daily time frame, you've got that TD nine count bottom on the 30 minute time frame. If price closed below that uh, TD nine count low, we already gave that number 33,129. Odds favor, we're headed lower. We get a breakdown. But of course, we'd really have to see what it looks like at the end of the day. Do I have any other bottoming type patterns inside the Dow Equity Future contract? The answer there is no. Do we have any kind of other topping patterns inside of the NQ? The leader in the clubhouse out here. And the answer is I'm not certain. We're going to go ahead and populate those charts. But quite frankly, it closed about 13, 494.25 at 2 p.m. would negate a TD nine count top. I just know that because I have it memorized. Uh, that would be a TD nine count top for the five hour time frame chart uh, that we're taking a look at. Do I see any other kind of tops? Well, the four hours got a TD nine count top as well. That says you could get a TD nine count top in it by this evening. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, we tried uh, connecting or, or uh, fixing that little, uh, I guess it wasn't much of a little noise. It was a loud noise out there. So hopefully it's fixed out there. And if not, uh, we'll just uh, we'll do the best that we can. So let's get some questions out here. And the uh, first one coming in really yesterday from Sat P. And we just didn't get the chance to get to it. And the question was really about Airbnb. Now, I don't remember what the question was, so I'll just give you the analysis of the uh, chart. It looks to me like Airbnb wants to go target its TD9 count breakout level. That would be down to about 99.84. You're trading below profile. You crushed it. You crushed below that uh, profile a couple of days ago. I don't see any kind of a bottomy pattern. Uh, the swing point, which was on April 6th, had volume of 14 million shares. It was taken out with 14.7 million shares, so that could be an A to B equal CD to the downside. The next price level of support on a daily time frame is at 99.84. On the weekly time frame, if you get another close below the bottom of its profile, which is at 106.98, you could be looking at 86.75 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Air, B, and B out there. And thanks so much for waiting. The next question came in from Mimi yesterday. She wanted to take a look at uh, Wells Fargo. WFC is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And right now what Wells Fargo is doing, it formed a TD9 count top on the daily time frame. It did that on April 19th. Then price formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that on May the 4th. And so now we have really price trading between its breakout level, which is at 3706, and its breakdown level at 4160. But it's below the monthly pro, or it's below the, the daily profile, 3907. So this has just got a, um, I'm not sure what it wants to do, message Mimi. I see a large consolidation between the breakout and breakdown levels for its TD9 counts. But other than that, I don't see much. In the weekly time frame, price could easily be pulling back to test 3661. Looks like it's already been able to hit towards that oscillator and change line at the 39.18 level. So not a real clear message there other than a sideways consolidation. Though a monthly chart is problematic. Now, what it has not done, though, is close below the B point of an A to B equals CD. And so what you want to do here, Mimi, is watch this price point. That's the price point from back in June of 2022, and that would be 36.54. If you were to get a close below 36.54, you'd then be looking at a large A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm not going to figure out the calculation, but 21.17 would definitely 
be the uh, price target area. So that's what I see when we take a look at Wells Fargo. Let's go on to the next request out here. The next request was from uh, S&P and the Tiger Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol NEE out here. So NEE trading right now at about 7604. That's next Terra Energy. It's really trading at 7621, which is right in between its profile. So this has got back inside the profile, a closed S&P below 7703. Um, what's it really open up the door for? Well, it's a bullish structure profile. Price got down pretty darn close to the to the center of that profile, which is a support level. The center's at 75.64. The low so far today, 75.78. So nothing's been broken. Volume about two million shares. The swing low that it's trading into has volume of uh, 8.1 million shares. So even though you're at about 2 million, it's still light volume is moving to that swing point and support has not broken. So maybe what we're dealing with here is just a bit of a consolidation with inside its profile levels. That's what I would call it at this stage of the game. On a weekly basis, you've got a consolidation with inside its profiles. That shows the better consolidation picture S&P. And that's between the bottom of that profile at 74.46 and the top at 78.46. On a monthly basis, next tier energy also consolidating with inside profiles. Now, this will be day number two, or it appears that it'll be day number two to the downside. As we take a look at the dance steps here for next tier energy, it basically has had a two to three bar move to the downside. The last three bar move took place here on March 23rd, and then at its low back on March the 1st. Otherwise, the other dance steps have been two bar knee jerk reaction lows. I don't have anything to suggest that we won't see some type of two to three bar knee jerk reaction low. So that says we should see a bottom form or at least a bounce um, that uh, would occur either tomorrow or the next day out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to next Terra Energy. Thanks so much for the request. The next request out here is from Brent to Martinez, California. And Brent wants to take a look at natural gas. So let's pull up natural gas here. Let's pull up those charts. Let's actually go and read the question. And the question goes like this. It says, don't do that, Stevie. The question goes like this. I'd appreciate your analysis of natural gas. Has it been a more sustained rally? Yes. What levels uh, each direction of support and resistance should be watched on the daily and weekly? Hope you have a terrific uh, Tuesday. Thanks, Brent. And I hope that you do the same as well. So we've got the charts up here for natural gas. And you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. And what we have here, Brent, which we have not had for some time, and that is a close above the top of a weekly profile. Now, we don't have a close above it yet, but we are trading above it. Last time was, for example, September 2nd of 2022, the weekly chart. So if we do get a close above it this week, that suggests, hey, we have a change in trend. Now, that does not mean that we don't have a battle, because we do. You've got a battle that's going on right now on a weekly base at $2.50. That's the center of that profile. And the top is at $2.74. And the TD9 count breakdown level, we did say it has a TD9 count bottom pattern, is at $3.14. That's the weekly time frame chart. The daily time frame chart is uh, shows that price is dealing with resistance right now. Now, resistance right now is the top of its daily profile. And the top of that profile is $2.42. We are trading, it's really 2.429. We're trading at 2.4. Three, two. So it's out at resistance. It's bar number seven out here, Brent. So um, if price can close above that, that says we could have a change in trend out here. But of course, you know that we could get a TD9 count top, but let's not deal with that. Bar number seven doesn't tell us a whole hill of beans out here. But what we're looking for is if this can close above $2.2.429, 2 that would be another bullish outcome for natural gas. That's for the June contract. So it does appear. The natural gas has bottom, both with that daily roads momentum indicator bottom pattern and the weekly TD9 count bottom. Now, on an intraday time frame out here, the five-hour time frame chart did form a TD9 count top. This current bar closes at 2 p.m. And it closed above $2, 2 2.432 to be exact, negates that signal and tells you about a strong upward momentum move. And if we get that, Brent, then that would suggest to me that we at least see a rally into bar number eight, maybe bar number nine of that TD9 count system. So that would be another couple of days. That would say at least we, we would likely get a short-term top in natural gas around Thursday or Friday of this week. But still too early to make that call 
but a close above that TD9 count top on the five-hour time frame chart, that would be an indication that would say, suggest that that would be more likely of a outcome out there. So I hope that helps you out, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's see, we've got a request here from Joe. Joe wants to take a look at Boyle. I'm looking to get back into Boyle. I think Boyle is the... Um, I'll just put this up. I mean, we're long natural gas inside of the newsletter. Um, I'm pretty sure it's these charts, right? Let me just see here. Yeah, so Boyle would be the two or the three X ETF for natural gas. So you're up at resistance. So we just did, you know, Joe, you just heard me do the, the review of natural gas for Brent. So that still holds. But you're up at resistance on that daily time frame. Would I ask you to buy resistance and knowing that we're in bar seven, we could get a short term top? I probably wouldn't do that. Instead, I think what I would do here is I would uh, I'd wait for a pullback, at least a one day pullback or one or two day pullback out here. But I don't know that we're going to get that here right away. That's the point. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll finish taking a look at oil as soon as we get back from this break. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, Boyle, basically, the question about trying to get into Boyle. So what I want to do here is let me pull up the June natural gas contract. I'm just going to create a new chart here real quickly. This is going to show us uh, a day, consecutive days up and consecutive days down. So give me a second here to get that chart populated. Okay, that should come up, and I'm going to pull this over. So I want to take a look at this just to try to get a feel for maybe what we should offer as a, a suggestion or advice out here with regard to boil. So as far as consecutive days to the upside, that's a weekly time frame. Let me get to the daily time frame. So on a weekly basis, we could be two bars to the upside. So it's, I'm going to leave this for just a moment. So we can see here, um, and, and typically, if you take a look at it, it's dance steps. All right, so we'll take a look at this. It's, I think it's a pretty cool tool just to try to understand the markets here. So if we take a look at uh, even in this bearish market here in natural gas, you know, take us back into September, we can see that the rallies have lasted primarily two weeks out here. There was one three week rally, but it was pretty much flat. That was the last one back on April the 28th out there. So we're in that two week rally phase. We know we could get a TD nine count top on the daily time frame by Thursday slash Friday out there. So, you know, do you play it for a couple of days? I can't make that call. I, I I wouldn't. I think you're looking for more of a longer term uh, trade out here. But certainly you could you could wager in. Now we're going to be in bar number three to the upside out here. And you can take a look at even coming off of the lows out here. These rally attempts have not lasted more than three days. So now I'm going to suggest, nah, don't even. I think just play play the odds here, right? This is really all about trying to master a probability. And so the probability of trying to enter in that position now doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not that it can't rally. Right, but we just take like what does it normally do out here, even though we're not in normal times right now with price above that weekly oscillator and change line out there. But I would still wait and be patient. And what I'd be patient for would be a two day pullback. That's really what I was getting at earlier. So I think that that's what would be the better option to enter um, a boil out there if you're not in it right now would be to do just that. So I hope that that helps you out. Let me just kind of keep this chart off to the side here. I include that with the newsletter. Okay, so that takes care of that question. Let me see what else came in. Well, I know I've got a couple questions in the den out here, so let me get to those, and I'll go back to the email system. The first one was from Nancy, or the next question is from Nancy. Who wants to take a look at Apple. So let's pull up the charts for Apple. That was not it. Here are the charts for Apple. So what do we know about Apple? So on a daily time frame, I'm just going to expand this out here, Nance. What we're going to see with regard to Apple is Apple has a Rogemint indicator it uh, does not have a topping signal. And the reason it doesn't is this bear sash candle that set up a road momentum indicator top from May 9th, the high of the prior candle turns out to be resistance. That's at 173.85. And this close here was 170. Oh, I take that back. We do have a road momentum indicator top that is still in place out here inside of Apple. But here's the, here's the deal. It's lost its momentum. Price below the green oscillator and change line, but it remains above the top of its profile. So even though it has a top, Nancy, its signal to you and I is neutral. That would change with a close below 170.92. Now, what is important about Apple, certainly, first, it's waiting inside of the uh, QQQs, but also right now we have a weekly TD9 count top. And as you know, you've listened to the show long enough, or even if you listen to it for just a half an hour, you'll hear me say at some point in time, that we've got a TD9 count top, we've got a valid top, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. What's that mean? Where's price going to head to? The oscillator unchanged line. So on a weekly basis, what Apple should be doing is moving back towards 165.08. Now, the other thing that it could do, won't likely do it, but it could do it, is take out that TD9 count resistance. And if it does that, well, this is the bar following bar number nine. So it really doesn't come into effect until next week. So right now, Nancy, Apple is neutral on the daily time frame. It's cautious on the weekly time frame. The monthly is having a party. And when I say it's having a party, it's above its green oscillator and change line. It's above the top of its profile. And it says it wants to get back to test that road momentum indicator uh, high out there, that wave number seven uh, top. Um, but I'm going to say the weekly and the daily are the ones that are in control as we speak just now. Um, nothing else for me to share with you on Apple, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, Phil inside the Tigers Den had a question, and it's really going to be a stumper for Stevie. Because Phil's question was about a inverse head and shoulders pattern out here. I am not a head and shoulders kind of a guy, but look, this would be the head down here. This would be the inverse, right where the cursor's at. Or I'll just take a, uh, I'll just take a, uh, a tool out, a rectangular tool. So you know, here's here would be the head shape. 
you know, here is the shoulder shape. Oh, I guess I have to hit that twice. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so here's the rectangle shape, right, uh, for one shoulder. Then you got the rectangle shape for the second shoulder out there. Now, what you like to have, right, is about an equidistant in time, you know, between one shoulder to the next, between the head. And it looks pretty good to me, at least for, for my work. So, but, you know, then you got to take a look at the, the necklines and all that stuff. And so, Phil, I guess the point that I wanted to get to is I am a novice when it comes to head and shoulders. Uh, it's just, and, and I, and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, vi I don't visually see the pattern that often I've trained my eyes just to look at, at other things out there. It's nothing against this pattern. It's just that it's, it's, it, it's. I haven't I haven't mastered it. It's really as simple as that. What I can share with you is really what we shared about with regard to the Dow, you know, and the Dow being at the bottom of a consolidation pattern. So if I just simply take this this one rectangle out here, we can probably adjust it. We could probably find a similar, but not the same type of a consolidation pattern inside of the Dow Diamonds. And you say it's probably about like this or what have you. And so what I would say is that if the consolidation pattern breaks, you then have a consolidation measured move. So we can move that down towards the bottom of this consolidation. Let's see if I can do that here. Can't get the cursor to work. There we go. So we move that down to something like that. And what's that tell us? That tells us that if we break through the consolidation, what it's going to do is get us, get us back to that TD9 count breakout level. And that's really what I would use here. That's what I would say would be the downside target. It could be a little bit below that. You've just seen that. But it really be that 322.84 level to TD9 count breakout area. So my apology that I don't have that experience to be able to. I can visually see the head and shoulders. But to then be able to elaborate on what that's going to mean or what needs to take place, it's just not in my wheelhouse. So, But maybe if you want to call into the show. Um, we can certainly put that uh, screen up and show it to folks, and you could uh, walk people through that. I'm, I'm not against anybody uh, doing that. We're really here just to pass that information to assist folks. So I hope that that helps uh, help you out. I think I've gotten to everything inside the Tigers. And nope, you've got the SVRA, not Saab. Okay, uh, that is for Dan, SVRA. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that up. And uh, looks like uh, maybe Nike as well. Uh, so uh, we'll take a look. Let's say SVRA up on our screens right now. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. I am. That's a beautiful thing. So as we take a look at this, it's trading at about the 216 mark. Let me just make sure. SVRA. And it's trading above um, a prior swing point. Looks like an A to B equals CD pattern. I don't know if it has the volume. The volume. Oh, it's got the volume big time. 252,000 shares today taken on a swing point that only had volume of 88,000. So that, um, and you're trading into resistance, which is the top of that weekly profile, Dano. So 216 is your little thorn in your side. If price can close above uh, $2.16, then the A to B equals CD pattern that is underway now on a weekly basis. You've got the same kind of pattern out there. Uh, that would give you, uh, let's see, the volume there was 314. That's it. You're already above it. You've got a weekly a to B equals CD. You've just got to deal with that resistance. Those those ugly sellers, and they're sitting at 216. Take them out with a shotgun. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the char uh, stock charts out here for uh, ticker symbol. Uh, uh, well, ticker symbol is SBRA. It's uh, Savara Inc. out here. Now, what it's done is completed the one to one A to B equals CD. Let me just change panels. You'll see the A to B equals CD pattern out here. It'll be the same for the daily or the weekly time frame. So we get to the black background panel to see the A to B equals CD. You can see how this is trading on the left-hand side of the C to D leg. Uh, that tells us that this is a stronger move than A to B and that this is going to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. The retracement was a 51% retracement. That tells us it's likely to do more than a one-to-one -one move to the upside out here. That next price target will be 235 and above that 249. Again, on the weekly base, you can see the resistance level of its uh, profile at 216. On a monthly basis, you can draw in some uh, TD, or you can draw in some trend lines out there, both to the upside and to the downside. So those could be some other battleground areas for you. So uh, that's what I see when we take a look at uh, SVRA. So uh, stick with that trade. It looks muy bueno. You also mentioned Nike. Nike is going to form a TD9 count bottom today. I know it's one of your favorite uh, stocks out there. And uh, I think you were saying about some call action out here. So what we've got Nike doing is forming a TD9 count bottom at TD9 count breakout support, which was 115.77. This area has been tested. Now, the last time that price was down here was back on March 13th. The volume on that move was 6 million shares. So far today, in two hours to go, you're at 2.6. So you are pushing that area with volume. So I think what this suggests to us is that we get a TD9 count bottom that forms in the bar following bar number nine, that price spikes that low of 115.79, and ideally it closed back above it with less than 6 million shares. And if you have that, and then the TD9 count, well, then I'd say you're in pretty darn good shape out here for at least a bounce up to that oscillator and change line, which would get us up towards 123.26 or 123.69 level out there. So that's the news off of the daily chart. The weekly chart has a brand new profile as well. And that's formed, uh, was that this week or last week? That was last week. And that profile has support at a price point of 118.03. We're trading below that, Steve-O. We are. It's Tuesday. So, Dan, if price closed below 118.03 on Friday, that's not a good scene out here. But we're not going to worry about that today on a Tuesday because the daily time frame says, hey, I'm here to save the day when it comes to Nike. So now we know what it needs to do. We know about the pattern. We know about the volume. And now it's time to just sit back and see if, in fact, that's what unfolds. Now, could the bottom be forming right now, Steve-O, even though it's moving down with volume? And the answer to that question would have to be yes, it could be. Why would it have to be yes? Well, if we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, when price gets back to a level of area of support, what we look for are intraday signals, intraday bottoming signals. Well, it turns out you now have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on a 30-minute time frame. 
However, the profile that just formed is above price. It's well above price. 119.18 is the bottom of that profile. That's sort of a bearish type message. Not that price can't get up there, but when profile says we have overhead supply inside of Nike. So I think you got a short term intra intraday bounce that's going on. I would still be patient and wait to see how tomorrow plays out just simply because it's moving back with volume out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at uh, Nike. And even though I don't know if you requested it, I do hope that that information helps you out. We had a request to go take a look at the XLE. I think that might have been, might have been SNP. Eh, I apologize, I forget. But what we do have with regard to the energy sector, the energy sector is sitting, it's, well, it's trading below support, the support of its daily profile, which was 78.64. It's trading into a swing point from back in March 16, 2023. That swing point did volume of 44 million shares on that day. So far today, the XLE has done 10 million shares. So it's moving back into that swing point with light volume. But even if it closes inside that swing point with light volume, and that would require a close below 78.40, it can still go test that low. And that low is 75.36. Will it get to that low? I'm uncertain about that. Price is testing support. And that's the bottom of its weekly profile, which at 76.89. So inside the XLE, if we start trading below 76.89, that increases the odds of getting back to test that swing at low. We're kind of sitting right at support right now. So I think that's an area for you to watch. The monthly chart isn't really helping us. The monthly chart is saying, well, look, Stevie, if we break through that swing low on the weekly time frame, again, that was 76.89, then I want to go explore 68.40. And I would say, well, if you break through that swing point that we took a look at, the one from March 16th, and you do that with more than the 44 million shares, then I'd say we're in agreement that that is, in fact, what wants to take place out here. So this is the only the first day down and a down day inside the XLE after a two day bounce. So we're likely to see the energy sector move low for at least one more session, maybe two more sessions out here. Is it a guarantee? No. But we are moving to that swing point with volume. So what this is telling me, even though I said that weekly is at support out here, it's not one where you would take a long position. Or if you were very if you're if you were not risk averse, then you would go ahead and perhaps take that long position. I would say I would wait though and see how tomorrow plays out and see how that 30 minute chart plays out. But it does look like we're in store for another down day with regard to the energy sector. So whoever made that request, I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for doing so. Let me check the phone lines real quickly. I'm still showing Nike. Oh, my goodness gracious. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Well, I, do I have to repeat all that? I probably do. I'm not going to, but what I'll show you. I'll show you the gist of it. Here's the here's the XLE chart. It's this swing point right now. Today's move going to this swing point from back here on March the 16th. You can see the weekly back at the bottom of its uh, profile level. So it is in an area of, of a support. The weekly is in between profiles, and that's where it brings up 68.40 here. So um, we're going to watch the bottom of that uh, weekly profile out there. That's the best thing we've got, as well as that 30-minute uh, TD9 count. Uh, no, we don't, have a, we don't have any kind of pattern on the XLE for the 30-minute time frame chart. And here was the fear fact that this was day number one. And the pullback, we should expect there to be a two- to three-day pullback inside of the XLE. So I did revisit it, but that was a much more shortened version of it. So now, and sorry about that, but uh, thank you for keeping me honest inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, Hector also wants to take a look at Google. So Dennis wanted to look at Google. Hector wants to take a look at Google. I think we get the charts for Google up on our screen here. And Hector goes on to say, recent breakouts are long-term consolidations. Isn't this a clue about the indexes soon to follow? Don't know that Google's going to be the um, uh, the uh, kicker that it, it, you know is the one to follow versus Apple or not, but certainly it is one of them to follow. But with regard to Google, and we're going to change panels here because you're going to take a look at the A to B equals CD panel as well because it has confirmed A to B equals CDs out here. So let's change screens. Let's actually get the symbol up on our screen, G double O G. And here we should see the A to B equals CDs actually pop up. So we do. So on a weekly basis, you can see the next target level for um, Google is up at the uh, 1.272 expansion or 121.13. So there's different A to B equals CD patterns. Here's the daily time frame. So on the daily, I'm showing a shorter 
A to B equals CD. Now, the B point was out here on the trading day of April 6. 34 million shares. When the B point was passed, it was passed with 47 million shares. We had a less than a 0.382 retracement. You know how I like to at least get a 0.382 retracement. This was a 31% retracement. But price did find support at the bottom of the profile, so I'm good with this. So what Google should do is target 124.04. It may and it's likely to do more than a one-to-one, -one, which would get us up to the 129.69 level. Now, the issue here, and I'll flip back real quickly here to the other charts, is that this is going to be bar number seven on a daily time frame. And that says that you could see Google form a TD9 count top between tomorrow and Friday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Mixed Bag Tuesday. You've got the uh, Dow off 203, the S&P down 10, NASDAQ wanted up 73, the semis up 31, the Russell's off 16, Tranny's down 129. We are looking at the charts here for the SMHs. And uh, so we know we've got a, a weekly TD9 count pattern inside the NQ. We know Apple's got a TD9 count top on its weekly. We know it's got a Roach Mentum indicator top on its daily we still got a uh, NQ, still has a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. I don't think the market is likely to top, at least until we see the SMHs. So there was a question from Hector. Hey, Google, it's breaking out. Isn't that an indication of the market moving higher? And it could be. 
It could be. But when I take a look at the SMH and we look at the patterns that are in here, the only pattern that I've got on the daily time frame is an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the swing point, which was uh, 125.18, uh, that was from the session of May 2nd, had volume there of about 3.3 million shares. Yesterday, it was passed with 6 million shares. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Your price projection on the SMHs, let me do that on my other screen out here. The one to one gets us up to 127.55. So we're basically almost we almost got up there uh, today. Um, the actual high of the day so far has been 127.38. So 127.55 out here. But what this needs in order to confirm a top is going to be a bearish reversal candle. I think if we get that Hector, then that probably does signal that we've got some type of two week to two month. Uh, type of a, a pullback, but I don't think it's here just yet. So I think we've got, uh, uh, well, I don't know what, I, at this stage here, I don't think that we've got it. If we take a look at what's going on inside those 30 minute time frame charts, we started the show off with those. They were giving us at least the bottom signals, which have worked. So during the last uh, hour, we came on at 11. It was pretty easy for us to just go back and say, hey, here's four charts. Same time frame, dealing with the futures, all of them having TD9 count bottoms. That was telling us to expect at least a intraday rally. And so far, that's what we've received. Folks, learn these tools out here. Just subscribe to Mastering Probability. I've got seven, eight hours worth of workshops up there that will teach you exactly, no secrets here, teach you exactly how to use these tools. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Thanks for joining me. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.